Let's do exercise number one for flash drum sizing. We're going to be sizing a vertical flash drum, or at least let's hope for the best that the L and D ratio give us a vertical flash drum. And we're going to be flashing a feed of 1,500 pound mole per hour, uh, which contains 40% N-Xane and 60% N-Octane, which is C8. The system is at atmospheric conditions, so we have pressure here. And the requirement is that 60% of the destillate must be exane. So this is already YD. The destillate will be 0 0.6. So we got also the inlet, which is 0 0.4. We don't have, or at least I cannot see the bottom. So that will be also useful to get. And these are the conditions. We got the temperature of 378 Kelvin. We got the vapor condition or quality, which we know is vapor divided by feed, 0.51. With this, we will be able to get the VLF flow rates. And LD, according to our studies, vertical flash must not exceed this criteria. Now, the questions are get the required flow rates, which I imagine is uh, vapor, liquid, and feed. Their compositions, which will be YD, which we already have. XP, we don't have it. And Z, which we already have. Now, after that, we'll be calculating the permissible velocity, most likely because we are sizing this. Then we need to set up the tank specifications and then verify the L and D calculation. Okay. So first things first, get all the streams and compositions. Verifying the data, I see that we got F and V over F, which this one, yeah, this one can be later on calculated. From the compositions, we got XF or C, whatever you're using. We got YD or YA, whatever you want to use. We can get XB, it's not here from the material balance, which will be preferable, or from the equilibrium line, if you have it. Okay, so let's perform the material balances. From here, we obtain that 0 0.51 times V will be essentially solving, oh, sorry, times F. Well, forget this. This is part of this part right here. If we solve for this, it's essentially V times 0 0.51 times F. F is 1,500, performing this calculation, this is the vapor, and the liquid is nothing more than the difference. Great, we got L and B in molar flow rates. Now, given the flow rate, uh, the feed, the liquid, and the vapors substitute, we know that initially the balance is done over exane, so 40% of exane is initially. 60% is required, we got the flow rates, uh, we got the feed flow rate as well. So the only thing that we need to solve is XB, the bottoms, or if you're using the notation of XL, which is the liquid. I calculated something around 19% of C6 in the bottoms. Now we have everything, or if you want to calculate the C8 values, it's just the difference. But now the interesting part right here will be to calculate the permissible velocity. From this, we will require the following. Uh, mass flow rates, mass densities, molar weights, because we want to calculate FLB. Remember the steps for a design of a flash drum are these. We are in step number one. I will get first the one of the liquid. Molar weight of the liquid is nothing more than the average according to their compositions. 90% of the liquid, 81% is obtained. This is uh, exane, molar weight of exane, molar weight of octane. Should be something around near the exane, uh, sorry, octane value. The densities can be the same, so we just add the proportion of each value and the mass values as well here. We got something around 0.696. And I have one request right here. I saw this in the book. And my opinion is it's kind of interesting that this is actually not grams per milliliters, rather will be pounds per, okay, the, these densities, I'm not sure what type of densities. So it's interesting because you had molar quantities, 
and you got this which in my opinion for a liquid i'm pretty sure this is mass so you will need to verify this uh, i did it the value doesn't change that much but you should do it also you should not do this which is smaller uh, compositions and mass densities okay so we continue with the vapor we do the same thing for the vapor smaller weight of the vapor should be uh, different because the composition changed now we have richer exane and the density of the vapor can be dealt with this pv will equal to nrt remember that if we get nrt we got the molar uh, weight average molar weight we substitute data and this is the density in grams per milliliters okay now it's time to calculate k drum we will do this via equation and via graph so via equation we will need to calculate flb so we substitute the wl which is the mass flow of the vapor is molar flow rate times its molecular weight or average molecular weight we get this value then we have mass flow of liquid will be the same but for the liquid molar weight times this part right here the densities once again the liquid density in my opinion yeah makes a little bit sense but remember that you must ensure that this is correct in my opinion it's not that uh let's say complex because you will see later on that the, these fractions does not change when you change them to mass so it should be something similar to this now that we got flb we will use the equation remember that we need to substitute everything so i'm substituting the natural logarithm here and we get where yeah all this long equation the final value is 0 0.443 i like to do it both ways i don't trust that much the graph but let's do it anyways so 0 0.07 so we got 0 0.10 0 0.01 so it should be something between this range we got 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 we get here and show to the left should be something around so let's assume this is this should be something around 5 48 something around 41 42 which in my opinion is pretty similar so i will use the one of the equation 0 0.443 and perform the equation which is right here 0 0.433 the density of the liquid minus the density of the vapor which sometimes you can even ignore this just divide the density of the liquid divided by the density of the vapor only if you are using pressurized materials maybe this should not be a good assumption but hey if you're doing this in a spreadsheet or calculator why not simply add it and we got this velocity which is remember guys k is based on feet per second so this is feet per second which is something around two meters per second so if you, re if you don't remember, we took the density from the P-mix and we took the density of the vapor from the ideal gas law. So now that we have the permissible velocity, we can continue to set up the specifications of the tank. We will calculate the uh, cross-sectional area, which is the vapor flow rate times the molecular weight of the vapor times the velocity times 3600, which changes second and hours and the density of the vapor so we substitute all the data if you don't remember them these are the values right here we just plug them in and get this value fit to the square now if you were to calculate directly the diameter you will do this diameter equals 4 times the area divided by pi 4 times 16 divided by pi square root 4 fit so that's a first approach for fit now let's verify if we were to change several type of uh, diameters. Let's verify for the length. So remember that length divided by D, we should select something between three and five. So why not four? It's a good guess. So the length will be four times the diameter. So we stick to the first value we got, we got 16 feet. And we should always verify longer, uh, well, let's say all the values. I use this, but actually, typically you will jump from 4 feet to 4.5 feet according to the standards of the sizing of flash drums. 
Anyways, you should select between 16 feet or 18 feet. So this in meters is something around five meter tall or almost two and a half persons tall. Something like this. So yeah, it's, it's high for a flash drum. Note that the common standard sizing, as stated before guys, is 4.5. So either you stick with the adjusted 4, which will be just, but typically we want to get something uh, larger to ensure the sizing. So go for the 4.5 feet.